Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared My 101. Now, I like doing gear reviews as much as the next guy. Everybody likes toys. Me, I like a lot of toys, especially knives. But if you're going to do a channel about preparedness and thinking ahead and stuff like that, every once in a while you got to dribble some knowledge out there. Well, <clears throat> one of the things I realized that you never see, or not often, anybody do on YouTube is recommend good books where you can really absorb the knowledge. I think books have been lost as far as good sources. You don't see anyone talking about reading books. Watch videos, watch videos, go out and practice, go out and practice, watch videos. But there are some books out there that I think are absolutely essential, crucial to your learning process. And I got one today. I wanted to start this new you know, short series on some of the books that I would recommend to my audience. Now, I had had the idea of writing a book because if you've watched some of my other videos where I talk about, you know, addiction cessation and uh, bugging out with kids and the factors that you got to consider and the stuff about the brain, the mind manifestation and things like that. You know, I kind of look at things a little bit differently than other people. So I was thinking about maybe doing my own book. Well, I started looking through my bookcase and refreshing myself on some of the stuff I already had. And I realized that not only has that book already been written, but I already have it and I've already been recommending it to people. Why, why is that a surprise, you ask? Well, it's because I only read half the book. Uh, <laughs> the half of the book that I actually read was that on its own was enough for me to want to recommend it to people. But then I started delving into the first half of the book and I'm like, oh my God, that's what I say. Oh my God, that's, I can't believe he said that. This is perfect. So now I have what I, a book and I'm going to recommend to you right now. And for lack of a better term, I'm going to say this book right here encompasses my thinking as far as emergencies and survival and stuff like that goes so much that this could be considered the Prepared Mind 101 Bible. And if you haven't read this book before, you're probably going to be a little surprised when you see the author. And that book is When All Hell Breaks Loose by Cody Lundeen. Now, if your only exposure to Cody Lundeen has been watching him on Dual Survival, then you don't know Cody Lundeen. The guy is freaking smart. And we tend to cluster around uh, the people that we like. Uh, I know Dave Canterbury, so generally speaking, I'm on Team Dave when it comes to stuff in the woods. But Cody, his stuff isn't just primitive stuff in the woods. This book right here has nothing to do with uh, hand drill fires or anything like that. This is more of a urban survival, anything that could happen outside of the woods book. And the best thing about this book is the first half. And that is the stuff that I didn't read the first time. But it's all things that I talk about here and there. I talk about it on Prepared Mind 101, uh, sometimes the Prepared Mind uh, 201 Facebook page, which doesn't get that much action. But let's look here. Uh, chapter 7, Getting Hammered by Stress and Fear. He talks about stress and fear and the different psychological symptoms and the, the physiological effects and the way that that just affects you in an emergency. You know, I talk about that. I think that's important. I think it's overlooked. People just worry about containers and fire and they think that they're ready to go with that. But unless you live in the woods, chances are that whenever whatever happens, uh, it's not going to be a wilderness survival situation. Chapter six, this is the one that really blew me away. And a lot, of, you know, a lot of people didn't get it when I did the video a long time ago called Manifestation Simplified. They're like, whoa, this dude's lost his freaking mind. And I'm like, no, this is really actually serious stuff. And this is how I became so big on YouTube by me practicing it. <clears throat> Chapter six, you are what you eat and think, 
feel, speak, act, and focus your attention on. Wow. Cody's actually talking about this stuff. And, I, and the people that I've talked to personally on and off Facebook and in the different uh, groups that I'm in, I talk about this, tell them about these kind of things, and they're like, okay, the, you see them start to get it. And then they start to understand uh, what we think and what we focus our attention on actually creates our experience. And that's not, that's not horse crap. That's not nonsense. If you actually, uh, I generally recommend an old book called uh, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. It's probably from the 60s. That book will make it all make sense. Forget all that other crap, the secret and all that kind of junk. That book will make it make sense. But anyway, Cody covers it. Cody talks about it in his book, and he makes it digestible and applicable to emergencies and survival and stuff like that. Perfect. He's already written the book. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. But there is so much stuff in here. I would, I would recommend, if you want to get a good grasp of what is included, I'm, obviously I'm not going to read this book to you. But you can get it on Amazon, you can get it on Kindle. I have had this in the Prepared Mind 101 store in the book section from day one. It's one of, it's, if I had to pick three books that I think everybody should read to get better prepared, this book would be number one. And then once you get into like the woods, the outdoor type stuff, I'm actually reading Dave's book, uh, Bushcraft 101 right now. I think that one's excellent. And I'll be covering that in a future video. But there are things in here that, there, there's so much stuff in this book that people just generally don't think about when they're thinking about survival and preparedness and getting their kit together and getting a plan together and just expanding their minds to all the different things that can happen instead of our little pet scenarios like, oh, I'm lost in the woods, I need shelter, I need fire, I need food. Well, there's a lot of things that could happen that are a little bit more realistic. There's a section in here, I'm not sure exactly which chapter it is. Here, well, here it is. What chapter is this? I don't know what chapter it is, but he, there's all these uh, kind of like case studies where he talks about different things that's happened through history and what those people had to deal with. Here's one, the Great Plains of the United States in the 1930s. What happened there? The Soviet famine, 1932 to 1934. Uh, the Warsaw Ghetto, 1940 to 1942. Northern China, 1958 to 1962. And it just, you're like, oh my God, that happened? That can happen? And that's perfect. I like that he put that in there because I think generally speaking, we as Americans tend to be too comfortable. We can go get whatever we need, whenever we need it. Just run down to the grocery store, Walmart, no big deal. But what if that's not there? Every once in a while you get a little glimpse of that. Uh, about a couple weeks ago, up in Toledo, Ohio, they put out this big scare that the water was all toxic or something like that. And you couldn't get bottled water for like 50 miles. It, it was crazy town. And I knew that it wasn't, it was gonna end up being nothing. I think they do these things every once in a while. They just scare people and it's like a, it's like a government little social experiment. It's like, what, what happens if we do this? And then they watch what happens. What happens when we turn off the EBT cards for half a day? You know, these things I'm a little bit conspiracy theorist on because it just seems a little too convenient. But it's good because it also wakes people up and they see, oh wow, look what just happened here. What if that was me? How, how would I deal with that situation? But there's, uh, I don't know here, making your own solar box oven. I'm just skipping through pages right here. Um, Sinister symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. All this stuff about water and the different kind of containers and how to disinfect water and different places that you can find water in an urban scenario. Stuff about food, you know. I'm saying you know a lot. I gotta stop that. <laughs> 
salt, you know, grains, fats, and oils, storing fats and oils. This is not a boring book. And what, what he does in this, when, when I first saw it, what I didn't like, I'm like, this looks goofy. He's got all these little, I guess you'd call them cartoons. And they're little cutesy cartoons, and sometimes it's like a robot or a sucker or, or something, and he's like telling you something. And it, it looks silly at first, but that's there for a reason. It, it, it kind of like grabs your brain and is like, okay, something's different here. It's not just the usual words in a line. And you gravitate toward it and you look at it, and it just, it's constantly changing things up as you're reading, and it helps your brain absorb it better. It's kind of like the idea with uh, when they first did P90X, uh, Tony Horton, the crazy, uh, <laughs> he had this thing about muscle confusion. It's like you can grow your muscles by con continually changing things up so they don't get used to the exercise. That's kind of the same thing it's doing here with your brain when it has all these different things in the book instead of just words and an illustration. Instead, these are like different types of illustrations that actually have useful knowledge. So you can actually sit here and, and read this book and stay interested in it. And you're like, oh, okay. But I'm telling you, I've said enough about this. This is my number one book that I would recommend anybody that likes my channel and likes the different kind of subjects that I've covered when it comes to survival preparedness. I'm not a prepper in in the sense that I am a stockpiler. I don't have a, I don't have a basement full of stuff. And people say, well, what happens if you, if you can't get it? Well, what happens if my house burns down? What happens if I get run out of my house? What happens, you know, there, we, I love, sometimes the what if game actually works in my favor. Uh, you can't, you can't prepare for emergencies solely by buying everything you're ever going to need for the rest of your life ahead of time. Uh, there's too many variables that you don't know. And if you spent all your time just storing up some giant uh, bomb shelter full of food and that was your plan and you don't have access to that bomb sh shelter full of food, then you just wasted an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money. I'm not saying don't have some food storage put back, but I'm saying think outside the box and never put all your eggs in one basket. And I think this book, this book, uh, I have no idea how much this is on Amazon right now. It's been out a couple years, so I'm sure it's gone down a little bit. But let's just say it's 15 bucks. This is probably the best 15 bucks you will ever spend in terms of getting prepared because you're, what you put in your head, that's more important than all the gear in the world. So this, that's especially good for the people that are on a strict budget. And they're like, I can't afford a good knife and I can't afford this, but I wanna get ready. Well, this is how you do it. Armed with this in your head where you've actually know it to the point to where you can recall that information and put it to use, puts you light years ahead of the guy that has the best tops knife, the best BHK, the best most expensive pack, all that stuff. It puts you way ahead of him on the scale of survivability. And if you're really on a budget but you got a smartphone or something like that, get it on the Amazon uh, Kindle store. I think this thing is like 10 bucks or less on the Kindle store. I've got it on my Kindle, I've got it on my Galaxy S4, I've got it on my laptop, and I've got two of these in paperback. And I did all that based on the part of the book that I read. I didn't even realize because I just, you know, I get busy. When books like this, I read what I want, set aside, pick it up later. I didn't even realize that the whole first half of this book is all the stuff that I talk about all the time. So now I don't have to worry about putting a book together. I can just say, hey, Cody already wrote, wrote the book. Go read it. So I've talked enough about this. That's it. Trust me. Uh, if you've read it, if you've read the book already, uh, comment in the comment section below. Let other people know what you think about it. Uh, and don't make this about Cody as a person or as a personality or Cody did this or Cody did that or Cody said this. Or, that's stupid. What matters is what 
does he have to teach you that's in this book? Just throw all that other kind of uh, popular reality TV drama crap out the window because it's, it's not there to benefit you. So enough about that. I'm Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. You'll find this book in the Amazon uh, store, preparedmind101.com, in the book section, along with a lot of other good books that I really like. But other than that, I'll be back with some more videos here soon, so I'll see you then.